OK, so we've said before that factors that govern reaction rate are basically the number of collisions that you might have in and how frequent they are and the energy. So the energy of the molecules. So this is given, this tells us whether the molecules, when they're bumping into each other, have the right orientation and then the right amount of energy. And then so if you imagine having two molecules that, let's say, by two hands are the molecules, if you have to react them on end on end, that's the right orientation. But they might also have to have the right energy. They're going very slowly. Maybe they won't have the energy to break or form the bonds that you want. So again, uh, whether they're going fast enough. So this is going to be telling us about temperature. And then so the frequency is also related to the number of collisions. is also related to temperature, like how fast they're moving. So basically, the rate tells us the probability at which the reaction can occur. Um, so we, uh, we've shown before, uh, if you think about our reaction pathway, here's our reaction coordinate. Right? We've done before, this is energy. And then so, for example, a single step reaction that we've shown before, where we have, uh, let's say, here's our reactants, products, and then again, we have some sort of pathway. Again, so critically, this is the transition state. So this is when the molecules have to be in the right orientation. So this is the orientation. And then again, this is thermodynamics. So the difference in, en difference in the free energy between the reactants and the products is what we've seen before as delta G. And then this tells us whether it's or endergonic or exergonic. Endergonic, it's endergonic, exergonic. So that's if delta G is positive or negative, and whether the reaction will be spontaneous or not. But this, the energy of this hump is more formally called delta G double dagger. So this is called the uh, activation energy, um, and then something that's called activation energy. These are actually two different values. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the difference uh, in a bit. Uh, this delta G double dagger is more correct, but this, the activation energy still is a applicable way of thinking about how reactions proceed. Um, yes. One comment I wanted to make is, obviously, if we have a multi-step reaction, we could have a more complicated reaction coordinate diagram. So suppose that we then have, let's say, reactants and products. Products, reactants. And then we have some sort of multi-step thing where you might have, let's say, this intermediate, then this intermediate, or this transition state, this transition state. The highest energy hump is going to, of our, so this will be our rate determining step. And then so this would be the relevant delta G double dagger that we would care about for finding this. So what this shows is basically that, again, te it's temperature dependent because the molecules need this amount of energy to get over this barrier and then proceed with the reaction. And this is related to our Boltzmann distribution, where if, remember we had our, uh, let's see, this is kind of our energy or like our, our velocity of molecules. And then this is kind of the probability. Um, this is our kind of distribution. So at a lower temperature, we would have some sort of distribution of speeds of our molecule. But at a high temperature, they would then uh, broaden out. And then therefore, if we have some sort of activation energy, like over here, this is our EA. At lower temperatures, only this percentage of the molecules have the right energy to perform the reaction. But at higher temperatures, a greater proportion of your molecules can do it. So again, we showed this before. Um, so anyway, the, the point is that our reaction rate and our rate constants should be able to be related to temperature and these energetic parameters for our activation barrier. So let's talk a little about that. Um, so the kind of classical way that people have done it, this typically only applies for the gas phase, but often we use it anyway. So in the gas phase, 
This is the so-called Arrhenius equation. And basically, this relates to the probability that um, your molecule will have this higher energy over the activation energy. So the equation is that our rate constant, k, equals some constant times e to the negative ea over rt. So again, r is our gas constant, 8.3145 joule per mole Kelvin. T is temperature. So this is temperature. Gas constant, activation energy. This is the Arrhenius constant. And this typically is called some sort of like frequency parameter. Um, usually it's uh, kind of related to it's reaction specific. So this changes for your different reactions. Um, it's often considered temperature independent. Um, and then so this kind of tells us like you know the frequency it's related to this some, some sort of constant about whether this reaction will occur um, and so this is our Arrhenius equation it's a rather simple one parameter equation there are more complicated examples that take more parameters so this is a little bit of an over oversimplification but it's generally the most commonly used and it's actually really quite useful um, so Again, this lets us relate rate constant to activation energy. So that's really critical. And so it tells us at every temperature whether uh, what our reaction rate should be. So presumably, as we increase the temperature, um, then you know, our proportion of molecules with energy higher than activation energy will increase. Therefore, our rate constant should increase also. So typically, when you plot this, if you plot T versus K, then we'll have some sort of exponential type thing. And then here is our plot. Um, so reaction rate increases with temperature. Um, this isn't as useful to use. So often you'll use a linearized form. So what you do is you plot 1 over t versus the natural log of k. And what we should get instead is a straight line. And in this case, our slope. equals negative Ea over Rt. And then this intercept is natural log of the rate constant, or sorry, of the Arrhenius constant. Um, so this is one useful way. So what you would do is basically run two kinetics experiments, find our two different k's at two different temperatures, or ideally you'll have more temperatures. So you'll find a series. Um, ideally, what you'll do, you'll, you'll run your kinetic experiments at different temperatures. You'll have a series of ploids. And then when you plot the 1 over t versus the log of k, then we can then get out our activation energy. So we can understand critical points about our mechanism, like the energy, the activation energy of our rate determining step. Um, and then so the relation that the kind of uh, relation that you often use is that you can take log k1 over k2. So th these are two of our data points. And then so this should be equal to Ea over R, 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. So this is just the formula for the slope if we're doing this linearized plot. So this is also um, kind of a key way to process a problem if we give you a word problem like this. So anyway, we can get out cool you know, energetic information from kinetics experiments.